in Montreal. The year is 1909. Here, just a few years ago, epidemics of tuberculosis took a fearful toll. The disease was known as the Great White Plague. One eminent statistician estimated that the death toll from all the wars in the 19th century was 14 million. In the same period, tuberculosis carried off 30 million victims. We conceived of a hospital dedicated to fighting this plague. The hospital would be in the center of Montreal. It would be designed, equipped, and staffed by medical experts in TB. It would be a center for treatment and a clearinghouse for new information, ideas, and practices. Our dream was a great one. But dreams don't cure disease. To make the dream reality, we had to find a home for our new hospital. My sisters and I had the honor of donating that home. Behind me is a house that looks much like the property that we donated to the King Edward Institute. It was called Belmont House. We donated Belmont House in memory of our parents. Of course, many citizens contributed with generous donations of cash and of their precious time. We did this because we know that public health is the foundation on which reposes the happiness of the people and the prosperity of the country itself. Dr. R. W. Phillip, an expert in tuberculosis, was persuaded to design the institute. He prepared a plan with the most modern equipment of our time. With his help, Belmont House quickly became a modern hospital. Here in 1909, there are many more cases of TB than is commonly supposed. The statistics are shocking. Just a few years ago, tuberculosis carried off 12,000 citizens of Montreal annually. Tuberculosis not only kills people, it makes invalids of many more, perhaps 10 times as many, and it is common in children. We need to get at the root of the mischief, and that is where Montreal's new institute comes in. The institute will serve as an intelligence agency, allowing doctors and nurses to gather information about TB. It will be a centre towards which all inquiries regarding tuberculosis will be directed. It will be a place from which education about prevention will come. It will become the centre around which other institutions dedicated to prevention and treatment will develop. The institute will not just treat patients. It will be the place where an even more important venture takes form. Through the institute, we will learn how to prevent and ultimately eradicate tuberculosis. The creation of the Institute places Montreal in the front rank in the Great War against tuberculosis. Indeed, in this great humanitarian war, Canada has the chance to lead the world, starting today, October 21st, 1909. It's a rainy afternoon in Montreal. Civic leaders and ordinary citizens alike are assembled to witness a technological miracle. His Majesty, King Edward, will turn a switch in England. That act will send a spark of electricity racing across the ocean. Seconds later, that spark will activate the waiting machinery in the new institute. His Majesty now sits in a room in West Dean Park, in which the telegraphic equipment has been installed. Your Majesty, we've received a telegram from Sir George Drummond, the chairman of the Royal Edward Institute in Montreal. The message reads as follows. May it please Your Majesty, as chairman of the inauguration of the Institute, which Your Majesty has been pleased to honour with your name, may I, on behalf of the donors, Lieutenant Colonel Burland and his sisters, of the officers of the Royal Edward Institute and the citizens of Montreal and others here assembled, convey to Your Majesty our profound gratitude for your interest in this work, for the welfare of your subjects in Montreal and in the province of Quebec. May I beg Your Majesty to honour us further by opening the doors of the Institute. 
I believe nine o'clock is the appointed time. Let us proceed. 